Mustang is back. And for the first time ever, the steering wheel is on the right side of the car. The interior is retro modern, featuring Ford's latest touchscreen technology. Under the bonnet, this top of the range GT version has a powerful V8 engine and costs nearly 900,000 Rand. But even if you have the money, you'll be lucky to find one. They're all sold out for this year. If there is a greater symbol of freedom than a galloping wild horse, I'm not sure what it is. So who the hell wants to drive a Mustang in the city? I've been really lucky, blessed, I believe the word is amongst the youth these days, to have driven some very expensive, very fast machinery. But I have never, and I mean never ever, gotten as much attention as I have in this Mustang. South Africans love this Mustang, love it. And sure, if you see a Porsche, you might respect it, you might admire a Ferrari, but people love this car. And that's quite special. Of course, the reason it receives so much attention is because of the way it looks. Now, I realize that that yellow is about as subtle as Donald Trump's hair, but the designers did say they wanted to emulate the 60s Mustangs. And that's why it works. It brilliantly creates nostalgia for the early Mustangs that we all fell in love with. And I think they've nailed it. So they got the looks right, obviously, but everyone wants to know how does it drive. Well, if you climb into it expecting it to be a BMW 6 Series or a Mercedes-Benz E-Class, then yes, you're going to be a little bit disappointed. But the reality is that it's a muscle car. And if you're expecting a muscle car, well then you're going to be very happy. On the way out here, I was doing 120 k's an hour on the highway and the engine was barely sitting at 2,000 RPM. It's a GT car, but also does a decent job of being a sports car. So when you do get out to a twisty, deserted road like this one, you can actually open it up. You can attack corners. The steering's a little heavy, but there's lots of grip. It flows really, really well. It's a little soft, but that's how they've set it up to be. It errs on the side of comfort. But I think you can see by the smile on my face that I'm really enjoying it. Oh, it's fantastic to drive, it really is. I just wish it was louder. If you can't enjoy this car, I'm sorry. You're just a grumpy old fart who's given up on life. Watch this, watch this. Just gonna go around a corner here. Look at that. And I didn't end up upside down in a tree. See, handles fine. As you might have guessed by now, that's the five liter V8 engine. There's also a smaller four cylinder turbocharged engine available. The same one you'll get in the Ford Focus RS. And I'm sure it's very nice, but you don't want that one. That's the one you want. 306 kilowatts, 530 newton meters, very similar power figures to the Maserati Ghibli S that we drove recently. But where that has a thoroughly modern twin turbo V6, this is a wonderful throwback. No turbocharger, no supercharger. It sends all of its power through either a six-speed manual or six-speed automatic gearbox to the rear wheels, where for the first time in Mustang history, Ford have ditched the leaf spring suspension. They've ditched the live rear axle and engineered it with independent rear suspension. It has dramatically improved the handling and this is specifically to please people who aren't Americans. And I can report that I'm very pleased. Of 
of course, this new Mustang is not without its faults. The six-speed gearbox is pretty dim-witted, really slow, actually quite clunky. It's not nearly as sharp as something you'd get from, say, Germany or Japan. The plastics, well, they're quite plasticky. They don't really fit a vehicle of this caliber, but it's so easy to look past all of those faults. Ford have done enough. It's technologically advanced enough to make you feel like you're driving a modern product, but it's also got enough of its past to stir up all that nostalgia. You can look past all of its faults and like it, maybe even love it. Even my colleagues who are generally quite sensible people, they like it. It's not just me. The thing is, my dad had one of these. Well, not one of these. 67 Fastback. It was black and he sprayed it candy apple red. Dropped a bigger V8 in it as well. Imported some wheels from America. And I just grew up with that whoop, 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 whoop in the driveway. I've been waiting a really, really long time to drive one of these cars, to drive a right-hand model. And I haven't been disappointed, not even a little bit.